Emulation drives are a pretty cool idea. You have a single drive that's going to have everything set up for you with all of your retro games, a nice front end, and you're going to be able to plug that in, start playing, scroll through your library, see videos, pictures, all that stuff. The thing is, a lot of the pre-made ones are going to have multiple copies of the same game. So you basically end up with something that has an inflated library claiming 40, 50, 100,000 games. And in reality, you're getting a fraction of that. And the majority of the stuff that's in there, it's going to be stuff that you're not really going to want to play. That's where something like the Kinhank 12 terabyte hard drive comes in because this thing is going to have pretty much every retro game made up to GameCube and Wii with some exclusions in there that I'll talk about here in a little bit. But you're essentially getting full ROM sets. So if there is a game that you want to play, this thing is going to have it in it. That is pretty awesome because a lot of people don't want to spend the time selling the high C's or backing stuff up to get a collection like that. Because let's be honest, that's going to take a really long time. I'm talking hours and hours and hours. Now, before we get into the video, there are some things in here that I'm not too excited to see. Things I wish they would have removed, but I'll talk a little bit more about those later on. For right now, I'd say let's go take a look at what comes in the box. Content wise, there's not a whole lot going on. We have a pretty standard USB A to B 3.0 cable, which is going to be used to connect the enclosure to your PC. We have a charger, which uses a barrel jack connection. I would have loved to see USB C, but no real complaints on this one. And finally, we have the enclosure itself, which is a Ugreen enclosure. And that is pretty nice to see because it is a pretty recognized brand that, you know, isn't going to have any major issues. Inside, we have a 12 terabyte Western Digital hard drive, which unfortunately you can't put directly into your computer. It's going to require an external power source. This type of drive is usually found in data centers, so they're meant to be very reliable, used for very long periods of time while also being pretty efficient. So no real worries about longevity on this thing. I don't think you're going to have any issues with it failing or anything like that. My package also came with a GameStar T3, which if you order from their website, you can add and in total, it would be $326 USD if you want the gamepad and everything, $299 if you just want the hard drive, or if you go on Amazon, you can get it from $289. The T3 just registers as an Xbox 360 controller, and it's usually about $30 on Amazon, so they're not really charging you anything extra. It's just a convenience thing if you want to have it all together. Ideally, you're going to want to use an Xbox controller, though, because it seems like everything's configured to work with one of those. But if you have a PC, I'm pretty sure you're covered on that. So this drive is meant to work with Windows. That means, unfortunately, it's not going to be fully compatible with something like the Steam Deck or a mini PC running Bazite. You can still use it if you just want the ROM library, but in order to really set it up the way Kinhank intended it, you will need Windows. That being said, for the PC, in order to really be able to maximize everything the drive has available, meaning getting the full PS3 library playable, you're going to want something with at least a 6-core 12 thread CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and an RX 400 or an NVIDIA 900. Those are going to be the minimum specs to get that emulator working properly. If you want to get a minimum specs for the PC games included, which I really don't think you should be aiming for the PC games, but regardless, they're in there. So let's talk about that. You're going to need something with the same CPU because PS3 emulation is extremely CPU heavy. So if you have something that can run those games, you're going to be fine with most PC games. You're going to want about 12 gigs of RAM and you're going to want something like an nvidia 1060 or an rx 580 from amd those are going to be about the ballpark that you want to be hitting so that you can get a good 1080p experience this will also work with handheld pcs and mini pcs if you have something like the legion go the ally x the ally or any mini pc with a 6800u or a 7840u you should be fine for pretty much everything that's included in this drive to varying degrees, ideally for PS3 emulation, you are going to want something with a 7840U in it. Personally, I went with the EM780 from Minus Forum because, again, it has that chip in it. And I didn't want to plug this into my main PC until I was sure it was completely safe. Which now I've been using this for a while now and I haven't really encountered any issues and I haven't really found anything that I wouldn't expect to be in this drive. So I'm not too worried about that anymore. As far as the handhelds, this isn't going to be the ideal setup for a handheld because you're obviously not going to carry this around, but it would make a great addition to your docked experience since these handhelds can do a lot more than just play on the go. Up next, let's talk about the installation, which if you just plug this thing in, it might be a little confusing as to how to get everything going, but it's not that bad. Once you connect it, you're going to find it in your file explorer under super game hard drive. And in here, you're going to see a couple folders. 
One of them says installation. In that one, you're gonna find all the stuff you need for Cody, for Play Night, for Big Box, and for Retrobad. Going back, you're gonna see another one that says help FAQs, and in here, you're gonna find Windows installation files. Now, these are the ones that might give you a false positive if you do run this through your antivirus because some of these are used to get cracked games to work. Now, up to this point, I'm sure you've seen a few things that are normally paid. I'm going to leave that up to you how you feel about those things. These are just the steps to get everything working. And we'll talk a little bit more about those apps and those games and all of that later on. All you have to do with these is just follow the written instructions. Don't overwrite anything. It's pretty easy. It's pretty much drag and drop. So you can't really mess this up as long as you read the text documents in here first. Now, if you don't want to do all of that stuff, you just want the retro games, which is what I would recommend you do. Simply go to the folder called Core Type R, open it, and there's going to be a program called Core Type R, and just launch that. Once you're in, you're going to have this main interface with each one of your launchers Retrobat, Hyperspin Attract, Techno Parrot, Cody, Big Box, and Play Night. And here in a little bit, we're going to go into each one and see what they're here for. But just one other thing I wanted to cover here. There are also some settings for the front end that you can adjust, but to be honest with you, I didn't even bother with it because everything was set up the way I wanted it to be out of the box and I didn't really feel like it was necessary. However, if you do want to come in here, you can check different themes out and just kind of change the whole look of it. Personally, like I said, I like it as it was, so I didn't do that. So that pretty much covers what's in the box and how to set it up, get everything going. Now let's take a look at what each individual component is doing and how it helps kind of bring the whole experience together. So first up, I'm going to be talking about Retrobat because I think this is going to be the main thing everybody's going to be using and the coolest and most important part about this drive. In Retrobat, you're going to find all of your handheld and home console games, and it's all going to be put together in a really nice package. You're going to have artwork, you're going to have videos playing, you're going to have each system divided by categories. Honestly, major props to whoever put all of this together because I can't imagine this was an easy undertaking with the amount of games in this thing. Speaking of that, I'm not going to be able to go through each system and show you every single game that's on this drive because that would be a very, very long video and I don't think anybody would actually watch that. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to say for everything 8 up to 64 bits, you're going to have pretty much full North American ROM sets. If there's a game you want to play on those systems, chances are it's going to be in here. Now, you're also going to get some of the European versions of those games, but the vast majority of games are going to be in English. A couple here and there were in Chinese or Japanese, but that wasn't really the norm, which was cool to see. I was honestly expecting a bunch of just weird ROM hacks and stuff like that, like we'll see in like the Famicom systems, but that wasn't really the case. And that was awesome to see. For the most part, it's just one game, one ROM, and that's it. And that's exactly what you want with a giant ROM collection. You don't want five of the same ROM that you're never actually going to play. Now, for stuff like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Genesis, and all of that, it's not that surprising that you would have a full ROM set because those games are pretty small. But surprisingly, it goes all the way up to GameCube and Wii. Now, it's not going to apply to like PlayStation 2 or even every single PSP game made. But for the most part, up to GameCube and Wii, if the game was released in North America, it's going to be in here. Now for PS2, it kind of makes sense because the PS2 library was absolutely massive and I don't think 12 terabytes would be even be enough for that. But you do get 641 PlayStation 2 games, which is a pretty big collection. Unfortunately, some bigger titles are missing. For example, I didn't see the Jack and Daxter games. I didn't see Shadow of the Colossus or Final Fantasy, but I did see the GTA games, Call of Duty, Tekken, Devil May Cry. So it will be a little bit hit or miss but chances are the majority of your favorite games will be present here. Original Xbox is an area where I did feel like it was lacking because you only have 62 games out of the whole Xbox library and you are missing some of the more popular ones like Otogi, Ninja Gaiden, but you do have Fable and Jet Set Radio, so I guess it's okay. But even if they were present, chances are you would have some type of issue running those games even on more powerful systems just because original Xbox simulation is kind of in a not great spot. It's getting better, but it's not there yet. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know if it's really going to get there at some point because there doesn't seem to be that big of a demand for this emulator. Luckily, the Xbox 360 is represented a little bit better with 114 games. 
However, again, we are missing some of the more popular ones like Blue Dragon or Lost Odyssey, but it does have the Halo collection. It has Red Dead and Banjo Nuts and Bolts. So you are getting some really good games here. Plus there's a bunch of hidden gems in there that if you were an Xbox 360 fan, or if you're somebody that never really got to experience the console, you're gonna have a pretty wide variety of games that you can choose from to experience what the Xbox 360 had to offer. For PlayStation 3, we get 172 games. And this one for me was pretty awesome to see because one, PlayStation 3 games are a little bit annoying to get. And two, the PlayStation 3 is pretty special to me. It's the console that brought me back into gaming. I was a really late adopter. I didn't actually get one until the PlayStation 4 was out. But after the Wii, I kind of got away from gaming and the PS3 with Skyrim is what got me back into this. So I was really excited for this section. Unfortunately, like with others, you are missing some pretty big games like God of War 3 and Bioshock aren't in there. Bioshock, not that big of a deal. There is the Xbox 360 version and that game is on sale all the time so you can easily get it. But still, kind of weird that God of War 3 wasn't included. You also get Darksiders, Call of Duty, GTA 4. So just because I'm saying some of the bigger games aren't included does not mean that you're not going to have a great selection of games and that you're not going to have a good time with these. The PlayStation 3 had a huge library and I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find a lot of your favorites in here, so it's still definitely worth it. For Wii U, it comes with 110 games and this is the only system where it had some issues with the game's loading because for some reason a couple just would not open. Like Breath of the Wild, it would just crash and there was really nothing I can do about it. I went in and I checked and made sure that the actual game files were in there, but for some reason it just would not work with the emulator. The vast majority did though, and I didn't really have any issues with that. It was also formatted to work with a keyboard and a controller for the screen switching, which is a little bit unfortunate. I would have loved to have seen just full integration of a controller, but that's not that big of a deal. You can fix that in the emulator settings. Next up, we have the Switch with 203 Switch games. And this is one of those things that I wish wasn't here, simply because the Switch is still a supported console. It's a current gen system. and. I don't really have a problem with emulating Switch. I show Switch emulation all the time. I own a Switch. I own a bunch of Switch games and I still emulate them anyway because it's cool and I like to play it on different things. But it just kind of feels like poking the bear when it's not really necessary. I'm kind of impressed that Ken Hank just went with it anyway. I mean, major props to you guys for having the cojones to do that. But you know what? Maybe if this wasn't here, we could get more PlayStation 2 games or some of those. I don't know. You guys let me know how you feel about this one. Um, just the messenger here, but I can definitely understand why this would be a selling point for some people. I just happen to not be one of them. I'm on the camp of less Switch, more PS3, more Xbox 360, and more PS2. And finally, the PS Vita. We only get 70 Vita games, but I kind of understand because even if you had a bunch of Vita games, the emulator for Vita on PC just isn't great. It's not there yet. It's still pretty early on. It will get better but it's just one of those things that isn't a huge selling point for me either simply because of the state of it. So that pretty much covers the collection of games and how many ROMs you're getting in each one, at least the major ones, but a couple other things to mention. Systems that don't utilize the full 16 by 9 screen, they're going to have bezels around them. For example, here with GameCube, you have these GameCube bezels on the side and it's going to be the same thing for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, uh, PSP, even though PSP is a 16 by 9 system, you do have a PSP bezel that you can turn off, but it is a nice attention to detail for a handheld system. Of course, games that utilize the full screen are going to be full screen. You're not going to have any bezels like, for example, here with Wii. However, with the Wii, I did want to specifically talk about this one because they tried their best to map the controller to the Wii mode for the majority of games to try to get them as compatible as possible. But if you've ever tried to emulate Wii, you know what a pain it can be. So it doesn't really work out. So if you didn't want to get this for a Wii, you're going to have to go into Dolphin and remap controllers or switch them over to the classic controller for the ones that support them. It would have been awesome if that would have been done for you. But I guess with such a large selection of games, it is a little bit tough. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is that because Retrobat is based on Emulation Station, you can make a lot of adjustments, if not most of them, straight from the launcher without having to go into the emulator. So from here, you can change things like aspect ratio, resolution, controller, video backend, all of that stuff. For example, with PlayStation 2, the controller wasn't working out of the box, but all I had to do was go in here and switch the controller mapping to auto and it fixed the issue. Controller was working, no other issues. 
So it is really cool that you can do all that stuff from here. It does a great job of consolizing the whole experience without you having to fuss around with a bunch of settings. You might still have to go into the emulators themselves for things here and there, but for the most part, you can just do everything here. So that's pretty much gonna cover it for all of the home systems and handhelds, but this also has a pretty huge arcade selection, which is split up into two separate areas, Hyperspin and Techno Parrot. It's kind of weird that the arcade games weren't included into Retrobad, but from a presentation standpoint, I get it. This is a great way to go through all of those games, which there's a pretty big arcade library in here. And like I said, this is a really nice way to go through all of those retro games and experience a lot of those classics. Now, personally for me, as far as the arcade goes, I did grow up in them, but I played a lot of the same games. So I was more of a Metal Slug and a Marvel vs. Capcom kid. Also a bunch of shoot 'em ups that I don't know the name of. I just remember seeing a lot of lights and I would just put my money in there and that was it. <laughs> So hopefully with this, I'll be able to relive a lot of those. I'm going to see if I can get an arcade stick to plug into this because this is an awesome setup. And if I can play it that way, it's going to be even better. But anyway, if you're an arcade fan, you're going to find a lot of your retro arcade games in here. And the more modern arcade games are going to be in Techno Parrot. Now, admittedly, I don't really have a lot of experience with those newer arcade games. I stopped playing arcade games back in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s. So there's a lot of games here for me to experience for the first time. And I'm glad it's in this nice package because I'm going to be completely honest with you. I would not set something up like this just because of the amount of time it would take. Next up is Cody, and I'm just going to talk about this one really quick. It's a media player and there's really nothing added to take advantage of it out of the box. But if you did want to turn this into kind of your all in one nostalgia machine and just add some older TV shows, maybe some anime in here, you could do it so that you have kind of everything in one place. But out of the box, there's nothing added for it. Just cool that it's here. Up next, we have Big Box, which I don't really feel like this was a necessary addition because Retrobad does a great job with all your retro games. And Big Box is essentially just another launcher. So I don't feel like the drive is any better including it. And if it wasn't there, I would have been perfectly fine. Okay, so finally, let's talk about Play Night. Now, Play Night itself, not that bad that it's in here. The problem is that it's in here for a bunch of PC games that I personally think should not have been added because I don't feel like they're adding anything to the drive itself because this is supposed to be for retro games. Personally, I would have much rather them just not include these PC games. And like I said, with Switch, just load up with a lot of the older games that we can't actually get. If you are somebody that's interested in this for the PC games, I guess, props to you. I'm not going to sit here and lecture anybody about where they should get their games from or how they should get them. That's completely on you. But I feel like this drive would have been a lot better without them and just give us bigger libraries of those other consoles that were a little bit shortchanged. Like I would have much rather have, you know, 20, 30 more PS3 games and more Xbox 360 games than cyberpunk or dawn of man or any of these included games that i'm honestly not going to be playing and that i already own on other platforms because i think if you're going to drop about 300 bucks on a hard drive with a bunch of retro games you're not really hurting for pc games so while i think the majority of what's here is pretty cool as far as all the retro gaming and everything this is really close to being kind of like the ultimate retro game hard drive so Hopefully we can see some other version of this in the future without these and just more of that stuff that we can't actually get anymore. So that pretty much covers it for what it comes with, what it can do and all of that stuff. But now the big question is, is it worth it or should you just put something like this together yourself? The thing is, if you look at the enclosure, the enclosure is about $30 on Amazon. And if you look for a 12 terabyte hard drive, it's going to run between 100 all the way up to $250 USD depending on the condition, the brand and all of that. So let's say on the lower end, you end up spending about 150 USD for it. So that's going to be roughly a little bit more than 50% of the cost of the drive already put together. Now, the question is, is that other 50% worth your time? Because putting something like this together will take a very long time. I'm talking hours, days, if not potentially weeks to put all of the videos, the pictures, get the front end working, configure everything, all that stuff. Is the configuration perfect out of the box? No, there's some slight tweaks that need to be done. And there's a couple games that either weren't booting right away or were in a different language. But I would say the vast majority of things do work right away. So to me personally, if I didn't have a ROM library, would I go for something like this? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would because 
again, once I have something like this, I don't have to worry about ever tracking down another game. It's pretty much going to be already there. Now, the rest of the stuff, the PC games, the Switch games and all that, I'm just going to leave that up to you. In my opinion, probably shouldn't be there. But for what is there, we're talking about over 10 terabytes of retro games, pretty much every single game made for the majority of the systems. I'd say that's a pretty sweet deal. It's kind of hard to pass up on something like that if you are somebody that's really into retro games. I don't think you can go wrong with something like this. And I don't know, what do you guys think? You let me know how you feel about these. Do you like these emulation hard drives that have everything already in them? Do you want to pass? Do you want to put your own collection together? Do you want to pick one up? All that stuff, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Really helps the channel grow. And I'll see you on the next one.